Now at 6 on WKYT this morning, the search is on for an accused killer who escaped police custody in central Kentucky. The latest on the hunt for William Napier coming up. Plus, a Mason County woman is in federal custody after the FBI said she called for terrorist attacks in the United States. Details from her indictment just ahead. Friends of a fallen Kentucky state trooper killed are holding a race in his memory today. We're looking ahead to the Eric Christman 5K coming up on WKYT this morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good Saturday morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And I'm Sean Moody. If you want to get outside today, you may want to do it a little bit early. So yeah, like, a little yeah. bit earlier because we're expecting some severe weather later this afternoon. Meteorologist Mike Linden joins us now with today's forecast. Good well, morning. Good morning. Through the early stages of our Saturday, it will look and feel a lot like the summer. We'll have mostly sunny skies. Temperatures will get into the mid 80s. But as we get into the late stages of the afternoon, that's where a big difference maker arrives in the form of a very potent cold front coming in from the west. You can see behind that front just littered with flash flood warnings. That's not indicative of what we'll see here in Kentucky. But what we will find will be heavy rain and some very strong winds moving into the second half of our day. Watch this. This is the highest resolution data that we. We have available to us. Watch what happens as we head into the afternoon today and this front arrives. Very slowly, we're going to see this front come together and pop some very strong to potentially severe thunderstorms tracking their way across the bluegrass. This will be about 5, 6 o'clock later this evening, not to mention very strong winds along with it. Now, there are some areas which do include Lexington that are under a slight risk for severe weather. Regardless, we're looking at some strong thunderstorms coming in today. I'll break down that severe threat coming up in about 10 minutes. All right, Mike, thank you. Police in Lee County are still looking for a murder suspect who escaped from a jail transport van. William Napier was on his way back to the Three Forks Regional Jail in Lee County when he escaped. WKYT's Mike Byers at our live desk this morning with the latest on the search. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Michelle. Police say this man, William Napier, was the person who escaped from that jail transport van on the way back to the Three Forks Regional Jail after a court hearing in Breathitt County. Napier was in jail after being arrested in July on a murder charge. He's accused of stabbing a man at the Jackson Inn in Breathitt County. Police searched for hours yesterday, combing Highway 52 near Rock of Ages Road without finding Napier. They brought in canines, but tell us they couldn't find Napier sent in the area. Police say Napier lost his shirt in the escape, leaving it near the river that runs along Highway 52. People who lived near when, uh, when the escape happened say they are going to keep an eye out for him. Be concerned a little bit about that, and um, uh, of course we keep them close by and take good care of them, so they'll be okay. Police say Napier was last seen wearing khaki pants with no shirt. Investigators also say they think he has a cut on his arm or his hand. Police will continue to search today, but haven't said where they'll pick up that search. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you. A Mason County woman is in federal custody today after the FBI says she called for terrorist attacks in the United States. Federal authorities arrested Marie Castelli on Thursday, saying she promoted the Islamic State. An indictment released late last night says that she lied to investigators about owning multiple cell phones. They also say she posted a link to a publicly available document on the Internet. That document described three people and their families and said someone should execute one of them. One of Castelli's neighbors says he doesn't think she knew what she sent. She passed on somebody else's threat, forwarded an email authored by somebody else. She may or may not have read it before she forwarded it. I mean, have you ever forwarded stuff without reading every line of it? Castelli's trial is expected to begin on November 7th and last for 12 days. Today, family and friends will say goodbye to a 16-year-old volunteer firefighter who died after a crash. Christopher Harrison died earlier this week. He was in a motorcycle crash on Saturday after the Jackson County High School homecoming parade. Harrison was an ROTC cadet and a member of the Sand Gap Volunteer Fire Department. The department plans to retire his badge number. His fellow JROTC members say Harrison will be buried with full military honors. His funeral service is at 2 o'clock this afternoon at the Jackson County Area Tech Center. 
Tomorrow marks the 15th anniversary of the September 11th terror attacks, and many people will be remembering the victims this weekend. Yeah, Lexington firefighters hosted the Run to Remember at Coldstream Park last night and honored the more than 400 New York City firefighters, police officers, and Port Authority police officers who died on 9-11. Firefighters invited people from the community to come out and join them. We appreciate all the support and, and, and just, you know, everybody just uh, uh, kind of joining in and helping us and lending a hand. That run also raised money for the Fallen Firefighters Memorial, Kentucky Children's Hospital, and the MDA. Friends of a fallen Kentucky State Trooper killed. They're holding a race in his memory today. Trooper Eric Crisman was on his way out to a wreck when he died in a crash. Crisman was from Anderson County. And they'll hold a 5K memorial race at 5.30 this evening. Friends say money raised from that race will go to Trooper Island and to a scholarship fund set up in Crisman's name at his old high school. The heroin epidemic isn't just a problem in Kentucky's largest cities. Smaller towns and counties are also feeling the devastating effects. After a recent rash of overdoses in Rowan County, leaders decided to use the county's code red alert system. It calls every phone in the county to warn people about the deadly heroin. There were close to 10 overdoses in a day's time, and Moorhead Rowan County EMS is just trying to keep up with the calls. Narcan saved all but one life. Sheriff Matt Sparks says after overdoses in nearby Montgomery County, he knew it would hit Rowan next. Lexington police say patrol and traffic officers are now carrying Narcan with them, and they say they've been trained on how to use it. Police say carrying Narcan will give them the opportunity to give it to an overdose patient in case they arrive at a scene before paramedics do. Lexington police say they spend around $26,000 on the Narcan. A lot of people look forward to it every year. The annual Roots and Heritage Festival continues today in Lexington. Vendors set up for the festival along Elm Tree Lane. Thousands of people are expected to attend this weekend. That festival features food and art from all over the world. Vendors say the festival is a great opportunity that you don't want to pass up. And there are a few events going on today that will put you in the mood for fall. Yeah, Culver's and Bywater Farms in Georgetown are teaming up for an amazing thank you to farmers. The five acre corn maze opens this morning at 9 o'clock. Admission to the farm is $10. Plus, kick off harvest season at Harvest Fest at Shaker Village. Take a hay ride, climb haystacks, and compete in the Farm Olympics. The fall fun kicks off at 10 o'clock this morning. And topping off the night at Shaker Village, there's a hard cider bash in their barn. There'll be a pig roast, barn dance, and plenty of craft hard cider that starts at 6:30 tonight. Should be hopefully uh, with the, the storms moving things. in. Yeah, hopefully the weather kind of cooperates for everybody this evening. Let's hope so. 6:07 now on your Saturday morning, and WKYT this morning is just getting started. Yeah, we're taking a closer look at one of Kentucky's new laws. It's called the Good Samaritan Law, and it helps those who witness a drug overdose as long as they get the victim help. We'll see if the law is effective in about 10 minutes. And active weather is well on its way, and some of it has the potential to be severe later this afternoon in the bluegrass. Coming up, I'll break down that severe threat and show you when the storms arrive. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Mike Linden. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. We are going to see two two seasons this weekend. That's really the way to put it. We'll see summer-like conditions and then immediately switch over to fall-like conditions in just a short few hours. We're locked into the, the, the autumn, or the summer right now. I've got two seasons on the brain. We're locked into the summer right now. It's going to be a great start to our day, and even most of the afternoon looks really nice. But as we get into the second half of our day today, around 4 or 5 o'clock, we're looking at a pretty potent cold front coming in from the west that right now is working its way through Missouri, Illinois, and bringing some strong thunderstorms along with it. We're talking strong winds and again the potential for severe weather. That's what we're dealing with here in Kentucky, especially later this afternoon. There will be a lot of sunshine. That means a lot of warming as our afternoon gets going. So any of the areas colored in by this yellow overlay, which does include Lexington and as far south as Madison County and into Lincoln and Casey counties, 
these will be under a slight risk for severe weather. That doesn't necessarily mean we could see it. It just means that with the conditions that will be present, that more than likely we are looking at some kind of severe weather. The major players out of this will be the winds, and here's why. Check out what happens as we work our way into the afternoon today. Again, most of your day looks really nice today. It is going to be humid, and we will see temperatures getting back into the mid to high 80s, but look what happens at around 4 or 5 o'clock. There's that front. Very well defined on the models. Now watch what happens as that front eases its way across the bluegrass. Look at this. Look at the temperatures out ahead of it. The mid to low 80s, right? Look behind the front. The mid to low 70s. That's a 10 degree difference. And what that screams to meteorologists is high winds, strong winds. That's a big temperature difference. Look at Lexington here, 74. Madison County, 84. That's a 30 minute drive and a 10 degree difference. Those are going to be some strong, gusty winds later this afternoon, not to mention the strong thunderstorms as well. By about midnight tonight, that front will be pretty much sitting over the southeastern mountains and overnight will work its way out of the bluegrass. There could be a few leftover showers into tomorrow morning, but those won't, won't even compare to what we'll see this afternoon. Sunday looks awesome. The mid 70s, sunny skies and then Monday even looks really good too. Temperatures in the upper 70s and mid to low 80s as well. Again, the major players out of this severe threat today will be the high winds. Could even see some hail too. A big temperature difference as well like that could certainly mean we see some hail in spots. Flooding and tornadic activity is a little low on the confidence, but we are certainly going to see this front later this afternoon. And again, behind it, that cooler air that's going to produ produce those strong winds will also make things feel like fall and in a hurry. Your seven day forecast actually looks pretty pretty good. It's just this early stage here that we have to get through for things to get better. Today, again, going to look okay through most of the day. If you have any events early in the day, you should be okay. But into the second half of the day, around 4 or 5 o'clock, that's when folks in Jefferson County, Franklin County will start to see these storms, and then they will progress their way eastward across the bluegrass. Those winds, again, are going to be quite strong, mm -hmm. too. So if you have things in your backyard that can easily blow around, just be sure to make sure they're not in a spot to do so. Yeah. Tomorrow, Monday, look fabulous. Rea right? I mean, yeah. you've got to yeah. love it. The upper 70s in the middle of summer, if not even the mid 70s. Yeah. That's really going to feel like autumn. For those people with like midweek weekends, like someone on this desk, I know you'll Yeah, enjoy that. Monday looks great. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Thank you, Mike. You got it. Well, we will be back just a minute. We got a lot more coming up on WKYT this morning. Lawmakers say it's a tool they put out there to save lives. We'll take a closer look at Kentucky's new Good Samaritan law when we come back on WKYT this morning. Bob, before we go on to break, tonight's Powerball jackpot is $205 million. Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot, $122 million. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 617 now on your Saturday. It's a controversial law that's only been on the books here in Kentucky for less than a year. The Good Samaritan law is meant to protect people that witness a drug overdose if they get the victim help. But as WKYT investigative reporter Miranda Combs tells us, following this law may be easier said than done. When you've lived somewhere most of your life, there are memories everywhere. He'd always say, Mom, I would never sell this place. And for Jerry Price, it was a life he wanted for his kids. They uh, talk about Daddy all the time. Samantha Price had 34 years of memories with her only child, but the last came on the back of his dad's log truck. Jerry died of a drug overdose. Even though people do drugs, it doesn't mean they're the worst person in the world. They just need help. They buried him in early July. How do you get over losing your child? But this home is where his spirit stays. Part of me went with you the day God called you home, and it does, a big part. Price says her son struggled with drug abuse for years. His toxicology report showed fentanyl in his system that was 11 times the therapeutic level. I think all the time, what could I have done? Different. That's a question with no tangible answer. But there are facts, Price says, that could have saved her son's life. And he was laying curled up in the back seat. She says there were people with Price when he overdosed, driving his van. They just drove him around. They drove him from Berea back into Rockcastle County. They drove him for three or four hours and him like that. If they would have took, took the time just to drop him out, 
at a hospital. There's a piece of legislation that's meant to support just that. The Good Samaritan law was meant to give a pass to people who witness an overdose. They can get help for the victim without facing any punishment for being present. Would the Good Samaritan law have helped save his life? It could have, yes. Yeah, definitely. Rockcastle County Sheriff Mike Peters is investigating Price's death. It's my understanding from, from uh, the information that we have at this point uh, that possibly as many as three hospitals were passed where he could have been helped. He thinks most people don't know the law exists, and if they do, they probably wouldn't trust it. I think a lot of the, a lot of people still think that possibly, you know, hey, it's a trap. They're going to catch me, and I'm going to, you know, so I don't want a part of it. Is it going to work in every situation? Of course not. No law works in every situation. It's another tool. It's another tool we put out there to try to save lives. Office of Drug Control Policy Director Van Ingram says the law that took effect last spring hasn't had time to sink in here. If you look at Cincinnati, who has a similar law and, 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 and had 123 overdoses in a very short period of time, only three of which were fatal. What's that tell you? People are calling. For Price, no one helped. Reports say his wallet was missing when he was found. As to what mindset they had, why they would not stop somewhere, I can't tell you. I know he done the drugs. I knew that. But they took the choice away from him when they didn't try to get him help. This Good Samaritan law is a part of a larger heroin bill that was passed last year, Senate Bill 192. Ingram says 24 other states have a similar law to the Good Samaritan law. All right, 621 now on your Saturday morning, and there's still more to come. Sports is coming up next. Well, your weekend is here, but we are also going to see some potentially strong to severe thunderstorms out there as we head into our afternoon today. Now, from now up until about 2 o'clock or so, things will actually look okay. Now, it is going to be quite warm and quite humid, but look to the west. Pretty potent cold front already on its way. Some strong thunderstorms already popping out ahead of that front. Not to mention, we're also anticipating some pretty strong winds with this as well. Check this out. This is the highest resolution data that we can present to you. Watch what happens as we work our way into the afternoon today. As we get to about noon, that's when things start to change a little bit. You'll see your clouds thickening up a little bit, but by 3 o'clock or so, there's that front coming in from the west and pretty much sitting right on top of the bluegrass right around dinner time, 5, 6 o'clock. We're looking at a very potent line of strong to potentially severe thunderstorms out there today. And of course, we are under a slight risk for severe weather. That does include spots like Fayette County, Clark County, Madison County, Boyle County, Mercer, Casey. Pretty much all of central Kentucky is included in that slight risk warning area. Again, through your day today, things are looking okay from now up until about noon. It's after that point that we get into the stormy part of the day with temperatures reaching the mid 80s. Again, strong to severe thunderstorms potentially with high winds, most likely the major player out of all of this. Brian Milam is back in next with more on the UK Wildcats. The Cats are in Gainesville in anticipation of its huge matchup with Florida. Huge in the fact UK has got to find a way to bounce back and be competitive for a full 60 minutes today. Drew Barker did play well against Southern Miss last week. Practice this week seemed to go according to script. In preparation for the Gators, their rabid fan base, and the Swamp, nothing new was put in place this week. Well, we've just done our normal crowd noise and just gone about our business. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't anticipate that it'll be an issue. I'm, I mean, there's you know it's loud, and you're going to have to deal with that. And we have it practice. He's been efficient, so uh, I don't know what else you can do. Get him locked in and ready to roll. You can see that game right here this afternoon at 3.30 on your home for UK sports. WKYT kickoff, as I mentioned, 3.30 right after the game, a special edition of Game Time. We will bring you Mark Stoops' press conference. Hopefully it's a winning one. The Denver Broncos won the rematch of Super Bowl 50 over the Panthers, but that win is getting overshadowed somewhat by the hits sustained by Cam Newton. Newton was hit 17 times Thursday night with more than a couple 
being of the helmet to helmet variety and only one flag thrown. The NFL medical officials are coming under a ton of heat because Newton was not checked for a concussion. You get the feeling there will be fines coming out of this. A lot of helmet to helmet shots. Now, late yesterday afternoon, a jury in Louisville delivered a guilty verdict in the case of former Southwestern football coach Dale Anderson. Anderson found guilty of sodomy, criminal attempted sodomy, and sex abuse while he was a teacher and coach at St. Raphael in Louisville in the early to mid-1980s. The jury recommended three concurrent 10-year prison sentences for Anderson. Anderson coached at Trinity in the late 80s as an assistant before becoming Southwestern first head coach. Southwestern, he, there at Southwestern, he guided the program for 19 years before abruptly resigning in 2011. That is a look at sports. Enjoy your weekend and good luck to the Cats. Now at 6.30 on WKYT this morning, family and friends of a 16-year-old volunteer firefighter will say goodbye today. We're looking ahead to funeral services for Christopher Harrison. Plus, police are still searching for a Lee County murder suspect who escaped from a transport van. The latest on the hunt for William Napier coming up. And downtown Danville is going to smell mouth-watering good today for the Kentucky <laughs> State Barbecue Festival. That plus your forecast ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Okay, so Sean is now hungry after that I, line. <laughs> I read mouth-watering barbecue, and I'm like, all right, I'm He's sold. like, I'm in. I'm going there right after the newscast <laughs> is over. Hope your Saturday morning is off to a good start. I'm Sean Moody. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And this morning, it's going to be beautiful outside, but this afternoon, you need to be aware, right? Yeah, maybe not so much. Meteorologist Mike Linden is standing <laughs> by and get the stuff done outside early, huh? Yeah, I've got barbecue in my mind too, Sean. <laughs> so we've got to go after the show because from now up until about 1 or 2 o'clock, things are okay. But beyond that, that's where things begin to get a bit more muddled. Look at the Defender Radar Network. Not too much going on right now, but you look at the top left corner there, and there's a little thing going on there, huh? Well, let's widen the view out, take a look. Well, it's a little more than a little thing. We have a pretty potent cold front coming in from the west set to bring us in some pretty strong to potentially even severe thunderstorms. The biggest player out of this will be very strong, potentially damaging winds moving forward. Check this out. This is the highest resolution hour by hour data that I have available to me. And again, up until about noon today, things are okay. But as we get into the second half of the day, that's when this cold front really emerges. Look how well defined that line is coming in later this afternoon. Those are some strong to again potentially severe thunderstorms. Thunderstorms out ahead of that front with damaging winds associated with it. This is going to be a day today that's really going to fool you. It's going to look okay through most of the day, but on a dime, we're looking at that potentially severe weather coming in. So coming up in about 10 minutes, I'll break down the major impact of the of these storms, when they'll arrive, and what we may see beyond today as we head into the new work week. Right, Mike, thank you. Today, family and friends will say goodbye to a 16 year old volunteer firefighter who died after a crash. Christopher Harrison died earlier this week. He was in a motorcycle crash on Saturday after the Jackson County High School homecoming parade. WKYT's Mike Byers at our live desk this morning looking ahead to today's services. Mike? Chris Harrison's funeral service will be held later today to honor the former Sand Gap volunteer firefighter. His fellow JROTC members say he will be buried with full military honors at the service. Last Saturday, he marched as a JROTC cadet in the annual homecoming parade. Then on his way home, he got into a motorcycle accident. Harrison later died on Tuesday due to complications from that crash. We talked with the Sand Gap fire chief earlier this week, and he says Harrison is someone that will not be forgotten. Harrison joined the volunteer fire department as a junior firefighter at 14 years old. He'll always be a part of this department and this community. Well, none of us will ever let him forget about him, that's for sure. Jackson County JROTC chapter and the Sand Gap Volunteer Fire Department will both be a part of the funeral services. Once again, the funeral will be held today at 2 o'clock at the Jackson County Area Tech Center. Firefighters also say that Harrison's badge number 466 will be retired from the service. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you. A murder suspect is still missing this morning in South Central Kentucky after he escaped from a jail transport van. 
Police were taking the man William Napier back to jail in Lee County after a court hearing when he escaped. Napier was arrested back in July and charged with murder. Police searched for hours but could not find Napier. Police did say they found his T-shirt along a river near Highway 52 and he was last seen on Rock of Ages Road. People who live nearby say they're going to keep an eye out for him. Be concerned a little bit about that and uh, uh, of course we keep him close by and take good care of them so they'll be okay. Police say Napier was last seen wearing khaki pants with no shirt. Investigators also say they think he has a cut on his arm or his hand. The mother of a pregnant woman shot to death on Lexington Street is pleading now for your help finding the people responsible. Police say Maria Coleman was shot Wednesday night along Winburn Drive. Her unborn baby also died. Coleman's mother told us she's going to fight for justice. I know my daughter would want me to be strong for her and to find out who, who did this to her. I want them to pay for what they've done. You have completely just tore our family to pieces. That was supposed to be my first grandchild. Lexington police say they only have a vague description of a possible shooter, and they say they've gotten conflicting witness statements. New this morning, two men are behind bars after Lexington police say they robbed a person at gunpoint. Police arrested Tyson Edwards and Dean Greco Brown after they held a man at gunpoint and took his iPhone and $10 in cash. It happened at the Thornton's gas station at the corner of Broadway and Loudoun. Both suspects are scheduled to be arraigned in court connected to the robbery on Monday. Police are still trying to find a suspect in connection to the deadly shooting of a man outside a Lexington hotel. Lexington police arrested Destiny Huff of Nicholasville, charging her with murder and robbery. Investigators say Huff and Daniel Glasscock were involved in a drug deal with Victor Villa Gomez Duarte. He was shot early Monday morning outside the Mike Hotel Inn on Buena Vista Drive and later died. An arrest warrant is now out for Glasscock. Also new this morning, Lexington police are working to figure out who shot out a window downtown and why. This happened on West Short Street at the Barrel Building near North Upper Street and Church Street just before 3 o'clock this morning. Police say someone was walking around with a rifle and shot out that window up on the third story. There's a lot of glass there in the area. Police tell us no one was hurt and they're not sure why it happened. In Clark County, police are asking for help identifying two suspected bank robbers. Winchester police say a man and a woman were involved in a recent bank robbery. Investigators think the two are responsible for thefts at other banks in the central Kentucky area as well. Police are asking anyone with information to contact the Winchester Police Department. The University of Kentucky is trying to help students displaced by the sudden closing of ITT Tech in Lexington. A UK spokesperson says that some former ITT Tech students have contacted the university with interest in applying. The UK Transfer Center has been meeting with those students and connecting them with advisors for their appropriate programs. UK is also waiving the $50 application fee for students wanting to apply. Now, earlier this week, ITT Tech shut down all of its campuses nationwide after the federal government cut federal aid for students at for-profit colleges. We're learning more now about a crash that damaged a pedestrian walkway on the Eastern Kentucky University campus in Richmond. Police now say the driver of the truck forgot to lower the boom after dropping off a container. That truck's boom crashed into that pedway above Lancaster Avenue, causing part of it to collapse. A wild scene out there. Now, nobody was hurt. EKU leaders, though, say it could take months to repair that pedway. And police think Lancaster Avenue between Barnes Mill Road and Crab Street could be closed for up to three weeks while crews make sure that pedway is secure. It is a busy September Saturday today. Yeah, there are so many events going on across central Kentucky. Here's a look at some of what is going on out there today. Lexington is welcoming the fall season with Oktoberfest. It continues this afternoon at 1 o'clock at the Cathedral of Christ the King. It features German food and beer, of course, and there will also be live music, games for the kids, and the celebrity cake wheel. The October Dash is this morning. Registration starts in a couple of hours at 830, and the race gets going at 9 o'clock. I was there last night. It's a fun time. Yeah, some they got great some, food. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and yes. big name bands in. They uh, they had the Gin Blossoms last night, and then uh, Fastball and a couple of '90s bands. Some '90s bands yep. for you. <laughs> Gotta love that. 
And then this this one is just making us all hungry. Downtown Danville is going to smell mouth watering good today. The sixth annual Kentucky State Barbecue Festival continues later today. Seven celebrity pitmasters from around the country will make their way to Constitution Square Park in Danville for this festival. They'll slow cook pulled pork, beef brisket, and ribs to perfection. The festival is not a competition, which means good food for everyone. Uh, so here you get to eat the meat. You can get in any pitmaster's line and order whatever special barbecue they have. So this is an eating event. I just lost Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way out yeah. the door. The festival opens at 11 o'clock this morning. There will be auctions, music, and even hog calling contests this weekend at the festival. Admission is free, but you pay for the food. I won't be doing any hog calls. Yeah, so let's hope not. <laughs> UK football season ticket holders are invited to an open house at the team's new training facility. Now, the tour starts just after WKYT this morning at 8 o'clock. The Kentucky football training facility is a $45 million state of the art building. The event ends at 11, just in time for fans to return home to watch the Wildcats' big road game today. Yeah, good luck to them. It is the Cats and the Gators from the Swamp today, right here on WKYT, starting at 3.30. And then stay tuned to WKYT right after the game. We'll have a special edition of WKYT Game Time. We'll have Mark Stoops' post-game press conference live from the Swamp. Also, this is another kind of fun annual event today. One of the Lexington Pools is going to the dogs. Yeah, I've never heard of this, but it does sound great. It's the annual Doggy Paddle at the Woodland Aquatic Center. Now, only dogs are allowed in the pools for the last time of the <laughs> swim season, and the event will be held rain or shine. Pups run the pool from 9 this morning to 3.30 this afternoon. Prices vary for the times you can come to the pool, but all of the money goes to the Lexington Humane Society. Yeah, good cause there. If you live in Bourbon County, you have another opportunity, too. You can take your dogs to the YMCA for the Pooch Plunge. That's from 10 to noon at the Paris Bourbon County YMCA. That one is $5 per dog, and all the proceeds there will benefit the Paris Animal Welfare Society. So plenty for you to do and your dogs, too. Yeah, always fun <laughs> to watch. You, know, you got the dogs that are just eating it up, loving it, and the other dogs are like, get me out of this pool right now. <laughs> I do want to see this. It should yeah. be entertaining. You got, a, you got a wide range there. It's 641 now on your Saturday. There's still plenty of news coming up on WKYT this morning. People are always trying to find new ways to break a world record. So one man has taken that world record to the playground. That story is coming up after Mike's forecast. And we are going to see what looks to be some strong to potentially severe storms blowing through the bluegrass later this afternoon. I'll break down that severe threat coming up. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Mike Linden. Coming up on 645, but we are looking at some big change getting here in about 12 hours from now. In fact, even before that, we could see some pretty noisy weather coming in from the west. Right now on the Defender Radar Network, things look okay. Doesn't look like there's too much going on in Kentucky, but let's widen this view out, and it's a whole different story for what is to the west of us. A strong cold front is already on its way toward the bluegrass. Look out ahead of it. Plenty of thunderstorms, some of which when they get here this afternoon have the potential to not only be strong, but potentially severe as well. That's why Kentucky and, in fact, most of Ohio, extending all the way into western New York, are under the slight risk for severe weather. That does include Fayette County and all the way southwest into and close to the Bowling Green area. Now, that does also include Lincoln County, Casey, Boyle, Mercer, Madison County, Clark, Scott, Franklin. Pretty much most of central Kentucky is under that severe threat. Here's why, though. As we head into the afternoon, again, not going to see very much out there from now up until about 4 or 5 o'clock or so. So things are looking good up until that point. Although, as we get into the afternoon, that's when that front gets here at around 4 or 5 o'clock over Jefferson County and Franklin County. And as it advances eastward, that's where we're going to get those strong winds and potentially the strong thunderstorms. But here's why we're going to get those strong winds. Look at Madison County at ahead of that front, 84 degrees, right? Look at Lexington, about a 30 minute drive away, 74 degrees. That's a 10 degree temperature differential. And that just screams out to us weather nerds strong winds, potentially damaging winds as well, not to mention the strong to potentially even severe thunderstorms popping out ahead of that front, too. Most of us should be done with that, though, as we head into the overnight hours as that front exits to the east of us. And then it sets us up 
for a fantastic looking Sunday. Dry temperatures in the mid to high 70s, feeling a lot more like autumn than summer on Sunday and even on Monday, too. Things look okay back in the mid to low 80s and upper 70s for our daytime highs out there. As far as, as, far as what you'll find out of these storms, the, well, the biggest player is easily the winds. Hail is possible, too. As you saw, that big time temperature differential, and that's some cold air coming in behind that front. So, hail is certainly possible as well. Flooding and tornadic activity pretty low on the scale of things. And in fact, we may see plenty of heavy rain with this as well. They are thunderstorms, of course. But the big story out of this front, outside of the strongest severe storm potential, is the fact that behind that front is that cooler air that's just going to wipe the slate clean, get rid of all this humid, moist air at the surface that we're dealing with right now, and replace it with much cooler, drier air that's going to set us up for a fantastic second half of the weekend heading into the new work week. So, a bit of a speed bump early here in the seven day forecast, that being today, especially so into the mid to late afternoon of our Saturday. And then as we head into Sunday, things look awesome. Even Monday, Tuesday look pretty good as well. But by Wednesday, that is where the storms return. Of course, it's a roller coaster ride here at the weather in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So uh, just one day here, and then things get better in a hurry. Yeah. Big time. Next two days look great. Kentucky weather, yep. that is how it is, right? Like, like a roller coaster. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mike. A 77-year-old man <laughs> decided to use his master welding skills to build the world's largest teeter totter. Charles Ewing from Illinois built it with his bare hands, and it sits in his backyard. Now, this teeter totter sits more than 50 feet high and 100 feet long. The world record is not official yet, but measurements have already been taken. Now, the Guinness Book of World Records is expected to let him know the results in two months. Uh, just I'm one laughing word. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Who would do this? I am not getting You're on not that. You're not going to get on it? I am not getting on that. Come on, why not? No, I got a heights thing, oh, okay. and uh, that might be an issue. But it looks like he's enjoying it, so that's good. <laughs> 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 6.48 now on your Saturday morning. So we're going to take a look at your money when we come back. If you think grabbing that airline seat booking has been getting harder, you may be right. And how you can feel right at home this presidential election season. I'm Karina Mitchell with Ghost Stories coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Welcome back. 651 now on WKYT this morning. And new numbers show that more people are traveling around the world. Plus, the billionaire owner of the Trump Taj Mahal Casino wants to shut it down. Karina Mitchell has the latest on your money. Investors are hoping Wall Street can recover from steep losses last week. On Friday, the Dow plunged 394 points, while the Nasdaq sank 133. A new report shows global air passenger traffic increased nearly 6.5% in 2015. That's the biggest gain since 2010. Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson was ranked the world's busiest airport, with more than 100 million passengers passing through it last year, followed by Beijing, China. Chicago's O'Hare came in fourth. And Carl Icahn, the billionaire owner of the Trump Taj Mahal Casino, wants to shut it down. His team has filed a petition asking regulators to approve the casino's closure, effective October 10th, but wants to start winding down some table games later this month. Icahn says the casino has lost millions a month, while local casino workers strike against it. And Donald Trump's childhood home is going up for auction next month. Newsday reports the opening bid for the presidential nominee's first home in Queens, New York, will be $849,000. The owners of the 3,600-square-foot, five-bedroom theater say they want to see what it's worth. And that's your Money Watch. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. In New York, I'm Karina Mitchell. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. It's 6.55 on your Saturday, and there's a lot going on today. Yeah, here's a look at some events that are happening today. The Roots and Heritage Festival continues. It's one of the most anticipated events. The Heritage Parade kicks off later this morning at 11. The parade route will wind its way through the historic East End. Now, the African American Marketplace will also be open today and tomorrow, and Club Nouveau will take the stage tonight. For a performance. And calling, Nubo, all super, <laughs> calling all superheroes, here is your chance to help children who need it most by lacing up your running shoes. The Casa Superhero Run is today. There's a 1K for kids where they all get capes and medals. 
Adults can have fun too, right? There's a 5K as well for runners and walkers. Plus, after the races, there will be costume contests, games, inflatables, and more. It all starts at 8:30 this morning at the Kentucky Horse Park. Now, if you sign up for the race today, the 1K costs $25 and the 5K costs $35. And Lexington is welcoming the fall season with Oktoberfest. That continues this afternoon at 1 o'clock at the Cathedral of Christ the King. There will be German food and beer, of course. There will also be some live music, games for the kids, and the Celebrity Cake Wheel. The October Dash is this morning. Registration starts at 8.30, and that race gets going at 9 o'clock. I still want to know what a cake wheel yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know. That just sounds great. So yeah. I, I, it looked great last night. Anything. What is it? I, I couldn't tell you, to be honest, but I <laughs> saw it mystery. from a distance yeah. and there were tables and tables of cakes. Can't I had to stay away because I had a sweet tooth. I yeah. would have eaten the whole thing. It's a mystery to all of us. Yes. But what isn't a mystery is the potential for severe <laughs> weather later this afternoon. From now up until 2 o'clock, your Saturday looks okay. But beyond that, a very strong cold front is coming in from the west right now, already bringing strong thunderstorms to Illinois and Missouri. We're looking at some strong, potentially damaging winds later this afternoon as a result of that. All right, we'll be right back in just a moment with more news. See you then.